Men my rough. Oh, thou art a tedious lady, and thy breath smells of lemon peels. <sighs> Which side's done? Shall I swoon under thy fingers? Oh, I'm so troubled with the mother. I fear too much. I have a present for your grace. For me, sir? Apricots, madam. Oh, sir, where are they? I have heard of none to hear. Good. Her colour rises. Indeed, I thank you. They're wondrous fair ones. What an unskillful fellow our gardener is. We shall have none this month. Will not your grace pair them? No. They taste of musk, methinks. Mm, indeed, they do. I know not, yet I wish your grace had paired them. Why? I forgot to tell you the knave gardener only to raise his profit on them the sooner. It did ripen them in horse dung. Oh, you jest. Oh, you should judge. Pray, no, taste indeed, one. Indeed, madam, I do not love the fruit. Sir, you are loath to rob us of our dainties. It is a delicate fruit. They say they are restorative. It is a pretty art, this grafting. It is, sir, a bettering of nature. To make a pippin grow upon a crab, a damson on a blackthorn. How greedily she eats them. A whirlwind strike off these bored farthingales, for but for that and the loose-bodied gown, I should have discovered, apparently, the young springle cutting a caper in her belly. I thank you, Bosler. They were right good ones. If they do not make me sick. How now, madam? This green fruit and my stomach are not friends. Ah, they swell me. Nay, you are too much swelled already. Oh, I am in an extreme cold sweat. I'm very sorry. To my chamber. Oh, good Antonio, I feel I am undone. So? So, there's no question but that her tetchiness and most vulturous eating of the apricots are apparent signs of breeding. Why, sir, what's the day? Shut up the postings presently and call all the officers of the court. I shall instantly. Well, who keeps the key of the park gate? Father Bosco. Well, let him bring it presently. You oh, gentlemen of the court, the foulest treason. If that these apricots should be poisoned now, without my knowledge. There was taken even now a Switzer in the Duchess's bedroom. A Switzer? With a pizzle in his great codpiece. <laughs> the codpiece was the case for it. There was a cunning traitor who would have searched his codpiece. True. <laughs> if he'd have kept out of the ladies' chambers and all the modes of his buttons were leaden bullets. <laughs> oh, wicked cannibal. A firelock in his codpiece. <laughs> Twas a French plot upon my life to see what the devil can do. <laughs> Are all the officers here? We are. Gentlemen, we have lost much plate, you know. And but this evening, jewels to the value of 4,000 ducats are missing in the Duchess' cabinet. On the gate, Chad? Yes. It is the Duchess' pleasure each officer be locked into his chamber till the sun rising, and to send the keys of all their chests and of their outward doors into her bedchamber. She is very sick. At her pleasure. Oh, she entreats you take not ill. The innocent shall be the more approved by it. of the woodyard. Where's your Switzer now? By this hand, was credibly reported by one of the black guards. How fares it with the Duchess? I fear she's exposed under the worst of torture, pain and fear. Speak to her, all happy comfort. How I do play the fool with mine own danger. You are this night, dear friend, opposed to Rome. My life lies in your service. Do not doubt me. Oh, it is far from me. Yet fear presents me somewhat that looks like danger. Tis but the shadow of your fear, no more. How superstitiously we mind our evils. The throwing down salt or crossing of a hair, bleeding at nose, the stumbling of a horse or singing of a cricket are of power to daunt whole man in us. <laughs> Sir, fare you well. I wish you all the joys of a blessed father. And for my faith, lay this unto your breast. Old friends, like old swords, still are trusted best. Sir, you are the happy father of a son. Your wife commends him to you. Blessed comfort. For heaven's sake, tender well. Sure, I did. 
did hear a woman shriek. And the sound came if I received it right from the Duchess lodgings. There's some stratagem in the confining all our courtiers to their several wards. I must have part of it. My intelligence will freeze else. Antonio! Who's there? What art thou? Speak! Antonio, put not your face in a body to such a forced expression of fear. I'm Bosley, your friend. Bos. Methinks it is very cold. Yet you sweat, you look wildly. Oh, that's that to you. It is rather to be questioned what design, when all men were commanded to their lodgings, makes you a night walker. In sooth, I'll tell you. Now all the courts are bed. I thought the devil had least to do here. I came to say my prayers. You gave the Duchess apricots today. Pray heaven they were not poisoned. Poisoned? A Spanish fig for the imputation. Traitors are ever confident till they are discovered. There were jewels stolen too. In my conceit, none are to be suspected more than yourself. You are a false steward. Saucy slave, I'll pull thee up by the roots. Maybe the ruin will crush you to pieces. Sir, that door you pass not. I do not hold it fit you come near the Duchess lodgings till you have quit yourself. Yeah! What's here? The child's nativity calculated. The Duchess was delivered of a son between the hours 12 and 1 in the night, Anno Dom 1604. That's this year. Decimo nono decembris, that's this night. Taken according to the meridian of Malfi. That's our duchess. Happy discovery. The lord of the first house being combust in the ascendant signifies short life, and Mars being in a human sign joined to the tail of the dragon in the eighth house doth threaten a violent death. Why now, tis most apparent. This precise fellow is the Duchess Pimp. I have it to my wish. This is a parcel of intelligence our courtiers were cased up for. It needs must follow that I must be committed on pretense of poisoning her, which I'll endure and laugh at. If one could find the father now. But that time will discover. Old Castruccio in the morning post to Rome. By him, I'll send a letter that shall make her brother's galls or flow their livers. When thou wast with thy husband, thou wast watched like a tame elephant. Still, you are to thank me. That's only kisses from him and high feeding. But what delight was that? It was just like one that hath a little fingering under lute, yet cannot tune it. Still you are to thank me. You told me of a piteous wound in the heart and a sick liver when you wooed me first, and spake like one in physic. <laughs> Rest firm, for my affection to thee, lightning moves slow to it. Who's there? Madam, your husband, old Castruccio, is come to Rome. He hath delivered a letter to the Duke, your brother, which, to my thinking, has put him out of his wits. You'd best attend him. 